everyone. All of you and every person living today are modern humans, or homo sapiens. But for most of our evolution, we were not alone. There were different types of humans evolving in different regions, and the most famous are the Neanderthals in Europe. The situation changed around 50,000 years ago, when some modern humans came out of Africa, met other humans, interbred a little, and then all the other humans went extinct. So what happened? Why are we the only humans left? This is one of the biggest questions in human evolution. In order to answer it, we need to first figure out exactly where and when modern humans met other humans, like the Neanderthals. And this is the focus of my research. I am using radiocarbon dates to map Neanderthals and modern humans in time and space. The principles of radiocarbon dating are straightforward. Living organisms, including their bones, are mostly carbon, which comes in three forms differing by weight. The heaviest, radiocarbon, or carbon-14, is not stable, and when an organism dies, its radiocarbon transforms into nitrogen at a known rate. By measuring the amount of remaining radiocarbon, we can calculate back the number of years since an organism died. In this case, 30,000 years BP, or before present. We've had this method since the 1960s, and there are thousands of published dates relevant to the question of Neanderthal-modern-human interactions. The problem is, most of these dates are wrong. They are wrong because of issues of poor sample selection or contamination. You see, human fossils are incredibly rare, and we simply don't have enough of them to get a clear picture by dating fossils alone. What we do have a lot of is the trash these people left behind. Stone tools, animal bones, and other artifacts. Now, there are some distinctive tools that were made by modern humans, and there are some distinctive tools that were made by Neanderthals. And with care, we can use these to infer which group was present. Then we have to identify material that can be radiocarbon dated, stuff that was once alive, like charcoal and animal bones. And we need to be sure that these charcoal and animal bones were left by the same group that made the tools. So for animal bones, we look for signs of butchery to know that they were brought to the site by humans rather than carnivores. Here you see a microscope image of a bone with a cut mark on it and a piece of stone tool stuck in that cut mark. Or for charcoal, we take pieces from clear fireplaces made by humans. Many of the bad dates are because this kind of thoughtful sample selection was not followed. Researchers dated bones brought by hyenas or charcoal from natural fires, and these dates blurred our understanding of human history. By choosing samples with clear links to particular tools made by particular humans, we can address this first issue of poor sample selection. But now we have to worry about contamination. Any modern carbon that gets into a bone can alter the date by thousands of years. So we use recently developed chemical procedures to check for and remove contaminants. By applying these procedures to well-chosen samples, we can produce reliable dates. Many researchers are working on this, and here are their results. These are the sites with reliable dates. You'll notice most of them are in Western Europe, and maybe this is because archaeologists like to work where the wine is best. <laughs> but the problem is Neanderthals were spread all the way to Central Asia. My research fills in this map in three important regions, Northeast Europe, the Balkans, and the Levant. For each region, I reviewed hundreds of published dates to eliminate the bad dates that might have issues of poor sample selection or contamination. Then I went on excavations to dig up new material that I radiocarbon dated. You know how when most graduate students are working on their dissertation, it seems like they disappear into a hole in the ground? <laughs> well, this was me for many months every summer. So in the end, I produced timelines and maps for each region that show where, when, and how Neanderthals and moderns overlapped. And here is my timeline for the Balkans, which is the most exciting. Time is on the y-axis from 55 to 20,000 years ago. Each column is an archaeology site. Purple is when Neanderthals were there, and red is when modern humans were there. At some sites where preservation allows, there is a layer of volcanic ash shown here in black. This ash is from a volcanic eruption that occurred 39,000 years ago in southern Italy. 
You'll notice most Neanderthals and some modern humans disappear at the same time. This eruption may have reduced populations of all types of humans and cleared the way for later groups to move in. Even so, we still have 5,000 years of overlap between Neanderthals shown in purple and these modern humans in red. 5,000 years is, in fact, an incredible span. It's the difference between ancient Mesopotamia and today. So how are these groups interacting for 5,000 years? I got a sense of the answer when I plotted the data on a map. Here you see purple dots when Neanderthals are at a site. And as time passes, red dots will appear when modern humans get there. Starting at 50,000, Neanderthals are widespread in the region. Then we see modern humans replace them along the northern river valleys and southern coast. And the last Neanderthals are in the central mountains of present-day Serbia and Croatia. And eventually, we only have modern humans left. So although we know from genetic evidence that Neanderthals and modern humans can and did sometimes interbreed, in the case of the Balkans, they mostly avoided each other in distinct geographic zones. Which brings us back to our original question. Why did we survive and they go extinct? We still don't know the answer. But these results give us one time and place to look for the answer. During this period of overlap, how did we differ from Neanderthals? Did we possess some inherent superiority? Or did fortuitous external factors, like a volcanic eruption, lead to our success? I think someday we will be able to answer these questions by taking a closer look at contexts like the Balkans, where Neanderthals and modern humans met. And whatever the answer, it is part of the shared history of everyone in this room and everyone living today. Thank you. <laughs>